Have you ever seen a bat fly overhead? Or maybe you've been out with a bat detector and you've heard them. Do you know they can live more than 30 years? And they can fly at speeds of 60 miles per hour or more. And they find their food in total darkness. They can eat thousands of insects per night. Here in Britain we have 18 bat species. And it's not uncommon to see them flying around. But what do you know about bats and the species that live here in Britain? The only true flying mammal, bats, are intriguing creatures. This means that they have fur-covered bodies and they're warm-blooded and they give birth to live young. The number of bat species worldwide is around 1,400 and more are being discovered. Microbats and megabats are the two primary types of bats. The majority of bats are microbats and they feed on insects like moths. Some bats weigh as little as a penny, while others have a wingspan of six feet. Many bat species rely on sound to navigate the dark and capture prey to eat. This is called echolocation. Bats usually use high-pitched sounds beyond the range of human hearing to echolocate. For centuries, bats have been feared. And this is because people associate them with vampires and creepy old houses and graveyards. And they're not exactly known for their beauty. Some microbat species, they've got folds or wrinkles in their muzzles, and people are really turned off by their eyes because they're quite small and they've got these razor sharp fangs. But bats, they're not aggressive and they don't seek people out. They're certainly not dangerous. You'll find that most bats, they fear people, and they'll avoid us. The vampire bat is the only microbat species that consumes blood rather than insects. They don't drink from humans, they drink from horses and cows. Vampire bats are not dangerous. They need blood to survive, but they don't harm the animal that they take the blood from. They make a very small incision with their teeth and then they just lap up some blood, usually from cows, chickens, pigs or horses, and that's it. The biggest danger is rabies, and you should avoid handling bats for lots of reasons, but this is one of them. But please do keep in perspective, less than 1% of the bat population contracts rabies, which is a much lower rate of incidence than any other mammal. Bats are essential for seed dispersal, plant pollination and pest control. According to lots of studies, bats' consumption of insects reduces the cost of all agricultural production by more than 3 billion annually. Another bat species rely on nectar and they're vital pollinators for many different plants. And then another bat food source for some species is fruit. And this is yet another important role in the ecosystem, seed dispersal. In the UK, bats make up more than a quarter of all mammal species. All British bats are microbats and eat only insects. We have 18 species of bat, 17 of which are breeding here. Not much is known about the Algothobat and its range and habits. It's found in wooded areas and it was discovered in the UK in 2010. The Barbastel bat has a pug-like appearance because of its upturned nose. It forages over a wide area and it lives in woodlands. The Betchetine bat is very rare and it lives in woodlands and roosts in old woodpecker holes and tree crevices. The brand bat is similar to the whiskered bat, and they actually often roost together, but in separate colonies. It feeds low to the ground, and it roosts in all sorts of houses, new or old. 
it's a small shaggy furred bat. The brown long-eared bat's ears are nearly as long as its body. You'll find them in gardens and in woodlands, and they like to feed along hedgerows. The common pipistrelle is very small. In fact, you could fit one in a matchbox. They can eat 3,000 insects a night. The Darbenton bat forages over wetlands across the UK. It's very fast and agile and skims the water surface for insect prey. The greater horseshoe population has declined significantly. They like to roost in old buildings, but they were once a cave dweller. The grey long-eared bat's ears are again nearly as long as its body. It's very rare in the UK and it forages over grassland and meadows. The Lysler bat flies fast and near the treetops. The lesser horseshoe, like the greater horseshoe, used to be a cave dweller, but now tends to roost in old buildings. It's also rare in the UK and declining in number. The Nathusius pipistrelle is rare in the UK, although numbers have increased. It's a migratory species, but some do breed in the UK. The Natteris bat prefers to forage low down among trees. Like other bats, it hibernates over winter. The Noctua is Britain's largest bat. It roosts in trees and can be seen flying over the canopy. The Serotine bat likes to roost and hibernate in old buildings in the south of the UK, and it's one of the first bats to appear at night. The Soprano pipistrelle bat can be found in woods and gardens. It's very similar to the common pipistrelle bat, and it likes to hunt close to the water. The Whiskered Bat. This is a small shaggy furred bat, and it roosts in all sorts of houses. It's similar to the Brant's bat. It feeds along hedgerows and woodland edges. The Greater Mouse-Eared Bat is an occasional visitor here to Britain, and it's one of the largest species. The paler fur on its underside can be seen when they fly which is usually along woodland edges or hedgerows. Many bat species around the world are vulnerable or endangered, and this is due to lots of different factors. There's habitat fragmentation, there's habitat loss, there's diminished food supply, there's the destruction of roosts, there's disease, and there's even hunting or killing of bats. In the UK, Bat populations have declined significantly over the last century and this is mainly due to building and development work. But there's also other threats as well. There's wind turbines and lighting if they're sighted on bat habitats. There's cats. We have so many cats. <laughs> there's flypaper and chemical treatments on building materials. So as you can see, bats have lots of challenges and it's not surprising their populations have declined. To help bats, our aim should be to decrease development and improve habitats. But decreasing building development is very complicated and difficult and something the public perhaps feels powerless to. But we do have a voice and we can make a difference. You can speak to your local MP, you can join bat groups, you can become a bat ambassador. Turn off unnecessary lights. Light pollution impacts bats for many different reasons. Promote natural habitat around your home. There's loads of guidance online how you can turn your garden into a bat-friendly space. Minimize the use of pesticides in your home. You can install a bat box so they have shelter. Never harm a bat and deal with any encounter humanely. There's lots of advice online and lots of organisations that can help you to deal with them. Thanks for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed the episode. As usual, if you have any questions, please do comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time.